Hi there, my name is Will and welcome to a guide on how to set up Kesha on Google Cloud. I'm gonna show you how to set up Kesha today on Google Cloud Compute Engine, Cloud SQL and Cloud Storage so that you can get Kesha working in production. In order to do this, you'll need to make a Google Cloud account, which you can do with your Google account. Let's jump in. Now that we're signed into Google Cloud and we're set up with billing, we can head over to Google Cloud Compute Engine where we can create our first VM. What we're gonna do is head over to the menu here, head over to Compute Engine and go to VM Instances at the top. We're gonna now enable the Compute Engine API so that we can use it. Now that we've enabled the Compute Engine API, we can now create our first instance, which is where we're going to deploy Kestra. So if we head over to the Create Instant button at the top here, we can click on that and it will then ask us for a bunch of information. Now for the name category, we can simply name this Kestra instance so that it's clear to us what it is. And for region, you can pick a region that is best located for you. As I'm near London, I'm going to select uh, Europe West 2, I believe it is. Now I've named uh, now I've named our instance as well as selected a region. I'm gonna leave zone to any as I do not have a strong preference here. I can select my machine configuration. Now the machine configuration, what, how much performance do we need? Now, what we're gonna do is click E2, which is a fairly general purpose one. Um, it's not too expensive, not too cheap, so it should be good for our Kestra needs. However, if you're doing something a little bit more specific with Kestra, then you might wanna consider something slightly more powerful, or you might want to have a look at using task runners where you can actually access more compute power completely separately to your Kestra instance. Anyway, I'm gonna select E2 and continue to scroll down. Now at machine type, it's important that we select something with at least four gigs of memory as Kestra requires that to be able to launch. Kestra also requires to have two vCPUs. So this example would be suitable. However, for this example, I'm gonna to go to standard and I'm going to select E2 standard dash two. This just gives us a little bit more power and should hopefully allow Kestra to run really smoothly regardless of what tasks we throw at it. We can scroll down a little bit further and we're going to come across our boot disk. We can change this as well to change the image to be Ubuntu. So if I click on here, I can select the operating system to be Ubuntu. We're gonna select Ubuntu here and we can select 22.04 on x86. Last thing we'll need to do is the identity and API access. We're gonna leave this selected to allow default access and for firewall, we're gonna select allow HTTPS traffic like that. And once we've done that, we can press create and build our instance. Once we hit create, it will take a few in minutes for it to boot up, but we now have our virtual machine that we can SSH into and start to configure. Now we can see that it is now running and we now have the option to SSH in where we can now install Docker as well as set up Kestra. Now we can allow authorized SSH so we can access our virtual machine. And once that authenticates, we'll be able to access it just like that. If you want as well, you can also SSH using your terminal on your machine. I'm gonna just use the Google Cloud one for simplicity. Now we're gonna set up Kestra using Docker. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is install Docker on this virtual machine. As we can see at the moment, it is not there. So we are gonna to need to install it. Now I'm gonna just use the instructions on the Docker website for installing Docker on Ubuntu, as Docker can be a little bit fussy about how exactly you install it. So I'd recommend you do the same. What we're doing here is adding the Docker APT repository so we can make sure we're getting the most up-to-date version of Docker. And then what we'll do is install it. Now I can install the Docker packages. And once I've done that, I can then set up Docker. Docker is now installed. We can simply just test this as working by using the hello world example on the Docker website. So if I just type that in like so, we'll be able to see that it's successfully pulling the image and it has come back and told us that it was successful. We can also check the version of Docker as well and we can see that it is successfully working as we would expect. It's also worth checking if Docker Compose is installed as we are going to be setting up Kestra using specifically Docker Compose. And we can see that Docker Compose is also set up there at the bottom. Now we're ready to set up Kestra. You can actually find a Docker Compose for Kestra inside of the Kestra repository. We can see here that there is a Docker Compose and this is what we're gonna use on our virtual machine. We're gonna use this curl command to create our Docker Compose file using the Docker Compose that we just found in the Git repository. If I run this command now and then type ls, we'll see that we now have a Docker Compose, which I can open using Vim. 
Now I wanna be able to go in here and set up a couple of little things to get this working correctly. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we have some basic authentication so no one can just come and access our Kestra instance. We can access that by heading down towards the Kestra part of the Docker Compose. And inside of the Kestra configuration environment variable, we'll see that there is a basic auth setting, which is currently set to false. I'm going to set this to true. You can also change the username and the password here. So something to your likings. I'm gonna keep them to the default for now for this example. It's also worth noting that we're gonna be running Kestra on port 8080. So we are going to have to go into our firewall settings in a second to be able to get that working. I'm going to save that as is, and we're going to jump back into Google Cloud's console to be able to tweak our instance so that we'll be able to access Kestra once it's up and running. In Google Cloud, we wanna click on the little dots in the corner here on our instance, and we're gonna head over to view network details. Now on the left-hand side, we'll see an option for firewall. If we head over to that, we'll be able to now set up some firewall rules. We can find that option at the top of the screen here. And when we click on that, we can start adding some names. Now, in order to be able to access the Kestra UI, we're gonna name it Kestra UI port, and we can add the description if we want like this. Now we wanna scroll down to the target here and select that to all instances in this network. We're gonna select IPv4 range. We're gonna select the source of IPv4 ranges, and we're gonna simply set that to the first example here, which is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. So that means that anything on the machine will be available. And like I mentioned earlier, we're also going to set the specific port, which we could see in the Docker Compose was going to be 8080. So I can select TCP and we can type 8080 there as our port number. Now that I've done this, I can press create. We can go back to the terminal where we can now spin up our Docker Compose. To simply spin up Kestra, all we have to do is write Docker Compose up and it will start to run. You can also use the dash D flag to be able to detach from your container if you want it to continue running in the background. Because we're still testing and configuring stuff, I'm not gonna do that so we can see the logs. And as we can see here, it's now pulling the latest Kestra image from Docker Hub, which once that has successfully completed, we'll be able to access Kestra. As we can see here, Kestra is now successfully running. We can see that the Postgres database is up and running. And now we can see that the Kestra server is running as well. We can now try and access this using the IP of our virtual machine. Now heading back to Google Cloud, we can see the external IP address is here. If I now put that into a new tab and put in the port, number 8080 we should be able to access Kestra and it's now asking us for our username and password which we left as admin at Kestra.io and the password as Kestra we will be able to access our Kestra instance so we've successfully got Kestra up and running however it's still running the database inside of the same virtual machine and we have not got the internal storage set up correctly so it will currently be saving any files to the instance as well. To make this a little bit easier to manage and a little bit more scalable, we're going to separate that Postgres database and spin that up using Cloud SQL. And we're also going to change the internal storage to be running on Google Cloud Storage. That will keep them isolated from each other to prevent any errors, but also allow us to control the size so we haven't got to make the Kestra disk massive for the internal storage, for example. This should also help us manage costs. First thing we'll do is we'll do Cloud SQL. So let's now I'll search for that in the menu and then we can set that up. Heading to the SQL option in the menu, we can now create an instance with our free credit and we want to use Postgres SQLs. That is the preferred option for Kestra. I'm going to just call this instance Kestra DB to make it clear what it is. And for password, I'm going to use a similar password to earlier for this example, but I would recommend something nice and secure. I'm going to select the enterprise version as we, this is just an example. And when I scroll down as well, we can see three different presets. Because we are just creating an example here, I'm gonna select Sandbox. And again, for the region, I'm going to select the same region that we selected for our instance because that's closest to where I live. Once I've done that, I can click on show configuration options. And this will give us a little bit more options on what we want to set up here as well. Now, the main thing we wanna do here is make sure that our virtual machine can actually talk to the database. So we're gonna just need to set up a couple of little configurations here to get that working. Now, under connections, we wanna change this from public IP to private IP. So only our virtual machine can access this. As we're gonna interact with the virtual machine, we don't need to access the database directly. And in here, I can select the default network and then set up connection. In here, I am gonna to need to enable the service network API and then I can allocate an IP range. 
For the IP range, we can just use an automatically allocated IP range and click continue. And once we've done that, we can create our connection. Now that we've got the connection set up, we can scroll down now to data protection. We can go down to data protection and we're going to simply just allow us to delete stuff here because we were in testing. This is just an example. So uh, I'm gonna turn off enable deletion protection so that we've got the opportunity to tweak things as we're working, but you would want to leave that on in production. Now that we've got it all set up, we can now create our instance and then we can start configuring users. We're now set up with our database. What we can do now is configure a user so that we can access it. Now that our database is created, we can head over to users and we can create a new user. I'm going to use the username as Kestra and I'm going to set the same admin password we used earlier. Once I've pressed add, this will create our new user, which we can now use later. Now, if we head over to databases, we can see that our Postgres database is up and running. So what we need to do now is go over to our Kestra configuration and update it so that it uses this database rather than the one that's inside of our virtual machine. Jumping into our Kestra configuration, we can go right to the top here and we'll see that we have our Postgres database. Now, because we're gonna be using the Postgres database that's already configured inside of Google Cloud, we can remove all of this. Now that we've removed that, that will not spin up a Kestra database. We can also go to the bottom here and remove Postgres because we do not want this now relying on a container that doesn't exist. And the last thing we'll need to adjust now is the Postgres setting under Kestra configuration. And we now wanna update this so it now points at our new database. Our database is called Postgres, so we will update that. And then we want to update the Postgres bit here as well with the IP address of our database. What we want to do is use this private IP address as our IP address endpoint inside of our Kestra configuration. So if we copy that and paste that in, we should be good to go. So I, as you can see, I've pasted it in there. I have our database name Postgres as well. So now when I save this and then I spin it up, we will see that it will work. As we can see, it has connected to our database. And it, if we now access from our other tab, we'll be able to access Kestra. And as we can see here, we're accessing Kestra, but the database is now running separately in its own instance on Google Cloud. There's only one step left, which is to add Google Cloud storage so that the internal storage of Kestra is now saving everything to GCS. As before, we're gonna head over to the menu and we're going to go down to cloud storage. What we're gonna do now is create a bucket. I'm gonna call this Kestra-storage. I'm going to name my bucket Kestra GCS example. I can then select my region inside of Europe. I can leave all of this settings as before, and then I can press create. And we wanna make sure that public access is prevented as we're going to create a service account for allowing us to access it. Now that we've got our bucket, we can head over to IAM where we're going to create our service account. What we can do here is go up to the top here and click create service account. I'm going to name this Kestra GCS, click continue. I can now grant this the role of storage admin so that it can access our buckets. Once I press continue here, I can then press done and that will create our new service account. Now, if I click into our service account, we can click onto keys and I can generate here JSON service account key, which we can use to authenticate Kestra. This is now saved to my machine, so I can use that in a minute. I want to be able to take that service account JSON and turn it into a single line JSON so that it's easier to put into our Kestra configuration. We can now stringify our service account JSON using this command here, which will provide us with a single line string. I can now copy this. And what I'm gonna do is now paste this into our Kestra configuration. So what we can do now that we have created our service account and we generated it as one string using that terminal command, we can add in our configuration here. We can change the type to GCS and then we can add this GCS property here where we can add bucket and the name of our bucket being kestra-gcs-example. We've got our project ID and then we've got our service account where I've just simply pasted in exactly what we had beforehand and then I'm going to save that. Now I've saved that, I can now spin up Docker which will spin up our virtual machine which has Kestra running inside of it. It will access our instance with our database and it will work with Google Cloud Storage for our internal storage of Kestra. And so now everything is isolated and running separately. And as we can see here, it has spun up. So now if we head back to our other tab, we can see it working in action. 
So now if I go to a new tab and if I paste in our IP address and 8080, we now have a version of Kestra running on Google Cloud using Compute Engine, using Cloud SQL and Cloud Storage. So this is a really great way to set up Kestra for production. We can also later add a domain name as well so that we can have our custom domain to access Kestra. Hopefully you now have Kestra up and running in the cloud so that you can use this in production. If you do have any questions though, let us know in the comments below or you can join our Slack community where we are always there to help and there are other community members willing to help as well.